This is The Reality. Hello again, so good to be with you once again right here on the radio, sharing the truths of God's Word in The Reality. My name's Dudley Anderson. We're going to be chatting today about the Word of God. In fact, today we feature The Reality Bible Special. And it's my pleasure today to be joined by Pastor Peter Jenkins for the Reality Bible Special. Today we're going to be asking the animals once again. We're going to be talking about the animals in the Bible to see what they can teach us about following the plans and the purposes of God. We're going to be looking at stories in the Bible about animals to consider them as parables, just as Jesus used parables to teach us the principles of God's Word. Today we're going to be chatting about ants, rock badgers, locusts, and spiders. How can we learn anything from an ant? Ants are creatures of little strength, but they store up their food in the summer for the winter. You could hardly imagine anything much smaller has got enough wisdom to store up in summer what it's going to need in the winter. But what are we learning? What are you doing with your talent? What are you doing with the opportunities God gives you to lay up treasure in heaven. Really wonderful to have uh, Pastor Peter Jenkins with me in the studio once again. This is the Reality Bible Special, and we're getting into God's Word and getting God's Word into us. Um, and uh, today we're going to be talking about animals. Uh, it's sharing, as it were, parables of what the animals can teach us. And we found that in Job. It says we need to ask the animals, uh, and uh, and they will teach us mm. about God, the Creator. They will teach us about the um, about the purposes of God in our lives. Uh, today Today, Peter, we want to focus on Proverbs chapter 30, reading from verse 24 to 28. There are four things which are little on earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a feeble folk, yet they make their homes in the crags. The locusts have no king, yet they all advance in ranks. The spider skillfully grasps with his hands, and it is in king's palaces. Peter, what's your thoughts on these? <laughs> well, the Bible calls them wise guys. Wise what guys. It actually describes them as, it actually says this, they are extremely wise. Wise How guys. How in the world can an ant be wise? I mean, think about the implication of this, the application of this. I never thought about locusts as being wise or spiders as being wise, yeah. but they describe you as extremely wise, which is quite a remarkable thing in itself. I did ask a question, if you could be one thing in the whole of the Bible, what would you choose to be? Mm. And I'm going to give my answer to that because I've thought about this a lot. And I would like everyone to consider this. What would you, who would you choose to be? Do you know, I really would like to have been the donkey that carried Jesus into mm. Jerusalem. Mm. Why? Because that donkey teaches me so much. With everything that was going on around it, people cutting down branches, taking off their coats, shouting and bawling, he kept going. Mm -hmm. He refused to be distracted from what Jesus wanted him to do. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. He knew that Jesus wanted him to carry Jesus into Jerusalem and nothing was going to stop him. And by God's grace, that's the greatest thing you could ever do is to fulfill the purpose and plan that God has got for you. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus wants us all to take him somewhere, to introduce him to someone. And there's so many distractions around us that will try to stop us doing that. So I just throw that out today. Mm. But to be that donkey is mm. quite remarkable. Phenomenal. I just want to take Jesus where he wants to go yeah. and not allow anything to stop me. And I pray that for everyone of our listeners. So we are turning today as we ask the animals, as we learn from God's creation... What an amazing creation it is. Mm. Four wise guys. There are four things that are very small, <laughs> but they are extremely wise. When I read that verse, it, it, I can't get past that verse reading, thinking about it, that you see the foolishness of God is wiser than the, than the wisdom of men. In fact, the Bible says God chooses the weak and the despised mm. and the nothings, the nobodies. He chooses them, which is what gives me some hope. He chooses those who are weak and despised and nobodies. Why? So that he gets the glory. 
Mm. How can we learn anything from an ant? Yeah. Now, whenever I look down and I see ants running everywhere, I just want to get rid of them. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. Mm. You know, I don't like ants. I just want to get rid of them. Ants are creatures of little strength, but they store up their food in the summer. Mm. I want us to think about that. They store up their, what do they store up in the, their food in the summer for? For the winter. This is incredible. That little tiny ant, mm. you could hardly imagine anything much smaller, has got enough wisdom to store up in summer what it's going to need in the winter. Mm. Life is really split up into four seasons. We have the spring of youth, the summer of manhood, the autumn of declining years, and then the winter of death. And after death, there is the judgment. And I wonder, what, what are you doing in the spring of youth or the summer of manhood or even the autumn of declining years? What are you doing mm. to store up treasure in heaven? Mm. What an amazing thing to consider is this from that little tiny ant mm. who stores mm. up in summer food for winter. So few people are laying up treasure in heaven. Mm. It is one of the things I'm absolutely sure of, Dudley, that because we have taken eternity out of our understanding of life, that life on earth doesn't make sense. You see, life is unfair. Why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know. Mm. Why do good things happen to bad people? I don't know. Neither did the psalmist David. As he looked around in his world, he was discouraged. God is good to everybody else. But to me, he said, I feel like giving up. <laughs> I look at the wicked and they prosper and everything they do seems to go right. I try to live a righteous life and it all goes wrong. I don't understand this. And right in the middle of that 73rd Psalm, he says, until I went into the house of the Lord and I considered their end. <laughs> I'm in the summer now, but when I think about the winter, I consider their end. And when he finishes that psalm, he starts off in total depression <laughs> because he can't understand why good things happen to bad people, why the wicked prosper. And he could not come up with an answer until he considers their end when he went into the house of the Lord. And at the end of the psalm, he says, as for me, God is good to me. <laughs> he starts off moaning and groaning. Yeah, but at the end yeah. of it, as for me, it's God David, is good for me. <laughs> Why? Because he's taught me to lay yeah. up in summer something for the winter. Yeah. He's taught me to lay up in heaven treasures while I'm on earth. This is an incredible thing. Yeah. We learn from that little tiny and work while it is summer because winter's coming when it will be too late work while it is day because the night is coming when someone goes to a doctor and my friend was taken into a hospice recently and and when he was taken into the hospice he was told he had two to three weeks to live i spent nearly every day visiting him and we talked a lot about his assurance of salvation. I've never met anyone with more peace hmm. about to leave this life. In fact, he was excited <laughs> about discovering the next chapter. It was such an amazing thing, really. And when someone's told they've got two to three weeks, he actually, he, was, he lasted just over five. It's a real, a real blow, isn't it? It's hmm. a, a shattering thing to be told. But in reality, we're not even guaranteed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the doctor says you've got two years to live, when did the doctor become God? Mm -hmm. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. Now is the time. Today is the day. Teach us to number our days, O oh God, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So we're looking at these wise guys, this little <laughs> ant who's so wise that he learns in summer to lay up food for winter. Mm -hmm. But what are we learning? What are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your talent? What are you doing with the opportunities God gives you to lay up treasure in heaven? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While it is summer, mm -hmm. while it is day. Mark Twain once said, a lot of people get shook up about the verses in the Bible they don't understand. He said the ones that shook him up were the ones he did understand. <laughs> and in Psalm 90 and verse 12, teach us to realize the brevity of life, to number our days so we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So important. Mm. 
Well, the good news is it's never too late to serve the Lord. Mm. Moses was 80. That's right. When God called him, you know, I was uh, a minister with Elim. I've been a minister with the Assembly of God, with the Free Methodist, with everybody you could ever imagine. But <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. Mm. <laughs> so I get a letter from Elim saying that now you're 75, we put you on the retired list, <laughs> which, which actually made me smile. And I said to someone, isn't that really funny? Because if Moses had been an Elim minister, he would have been retired five years before God before had called him. Before he started him. ministering. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. That's just my sense of humor, but yeah. it did make me funny. Right. Whatever age you are, there is something you can do for God today. Mm. My granddad was confined to bed for the last 18 months of his life. And I just started it in the church where I came to in the Midlands in Amblecourt. We were a small group of people. But every single Sunday night, I preached the gospel and every week people were getting saved. And I actually began to think I was a good gospel preacher. Mm -hmm. I thought I must be a good gospel preacher because everybody I'm speaking to, they haven't seen anybody saved for months and years. And every Sunday we're getting people saved and they are bringing more people and they are bringing more people. And it's incredible. Mm. And then my granddad died and nobody got saved. And I realized it wasn't my preaching. It was my granddad's prayer because he oh. knew what time the meeting started on a Sunday night. Wow. wow. And he knew what time I'd be making the altar call. Incredible. And my granddad, confined to bed, Jesus. was praying all the way through that meeting. And when my granddad died, nobody got saved for three months until I repented before God and realized it wasn't my preaching. It was my wow. granddad's prayer. That's incredible. How Peter. amazing is that? Praise So God. you may be confined to bed. Awesome. awesome. But you can pray. Yes. There is something every one of us can do for the Lord today. Yes. Never despise whatever God has given you to do. Even a cup of cold water given in his name will never lose its reward. And I want to encourage you, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, however little you've got, there's something you can do to serve the Lord today to lay up treasure in heaven. It's an amazing thing. We've said it that the kingdom of this world, kingdom against kingdom, we are seeing this more and more, Dudley, is the kingdom of God against the kingdom of this world is in direct conflict now. Total conflict. There's a spiritual warfare going on where we are rewriting the Ten Commandments, where, mm. where things that God determined, male and female, is no longer the way we want to identify people anymore. We call in evil good and good evil, and God says, woe unto those, mm. you know, that mm. do such things. Well, we think that we can deny the Creator and somehow sort out the problems of creation is arrogance beyond description. So there's the ant, a little tiny ant. The next time you see an ant, just realize as he's running around so much, he's working so hard because he's laying up food for the mm, winter. Mm. An amazing thing, if ever there was. See, the question really is not, is winter coming? The question is, will you be ready when winter comes? Because it's coming. Because it's coming. Mm. The, it's a coming. It's appointed unto man once to die. This is a fact. And after death, the judgment. With all of my heart, I am so thankful. When I stand before God, he will be my father and not my judge. Amen. With all of my heart, Thank you, I say that today. Amen. Jesus gave a name to heaven. He called it Father's House. Hmm. So if you don't know God as your father, you won't feel at home in heaven anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I went to my father's house, I felt at home. I didn't ask permission to go in the fridge. I didn't ask permission <laughs> to make a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. It was my father's house. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask permission even to put my feet up on the settee, although my mother would tell me off for doing that. But it was <laughs> my father's house I felt at home. Mm -hmm. How amazing that is, right? That heaven is our Father's house, and I pray every person listening to this program today will have the assurance when you stand before God, he'll be your Father and not your judge. You're listening to The Reality, produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. We depend on the generous gifts of our listener to produce this program. You can help reach millions of folks with the sure reality of the message of Jesus by becoming a Sure Reality Vision Partner. To partner with us, please visit the website surereality.net and click on Become a Vision Partner. 
Well, if you've just joined us, a hearty hello. I'm Dudley Anderson, and you're listening to The Reality. Today, it's the Reality Bible Special. If we've said anything so far that has just struck a chord in your heart, you've got some questions, or perhaps you'd like to make some comments, maybe you like some prayer, I'd love to hear from you. Write to me, if you will, dudley at surereality.net. Send me an email, dudley at surereality.net. We feature a discussion around the Word of God once a month right here on The Reality, and I'm joined by Pastor Peter Jenkins as we share some thoughts about the animals in Scripture. We've entitled the series, Ask the Animals. It's part three in the series. Jesus taught in parables to help us to understand the principles of God. Well, we're going to be using parables, so to speak, about animals in the Bible to help us to understand the principles and the purposes of God in our lives. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 to 28, which shares some thoughts about four creatures that teach us wisdom, and they are ants, rock badgers, locusts, and spiders. We've seen how the ant, the smallest of them all, works so hard through the summer to store up food for winter, encouraging us, as we learn from their wisdom, to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. Everything we do in life can make a difference. Sharing the gospel, helping the needy, praying for the lost. So let's continue to Ask the Animals today with Pastor Peter Jenkins on the Reality Bible Special. So the ant teaches us that while it is day, I want to serve the Lord, which is why we are making this program right now. Come on. How amazing is that? The Bible teaches us, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. You know, the question was asked when the millionaire died, how much did he leave? The answer was everything. Mm. <laughs> you don't take nothing with you. You don't take anything. No, you don't take no. it with you. Yeah. Secondly, mm. it says the conies are little feeble things, big mice that live in the rocks. It's a rock, very vulnerable. Rock badger. Yeah, yeah, a rock badger. But you know where it lives? It lives in the rocks. Rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in the this is so powerful the wise man built his house upon the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand what foundation are you building your life upon general booth the founder of the salvation army had a vision and in his dream he saw he saw a a tumultuous sea the waves were roaring and there were people in the sea crying and shouting they were drowning crying for help and he dives in to try to rescue these people and he sees on the side there was a rock and he gets as many as he can one by one onto that rock a place of safety and then he begins to feel tired in his dream and he asks some of those on the rock to help him but they were so content where they were, enjoying their lives, they'd forgotten that once they were in the sea themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to remind everybody today that if Jesus hadn't stooped down and lifted us out of the mess we were in, that we would be drowning in the sea. Mm -hmm. And he's put our feet upon a rock, but now it's our responsibility to do what we can to get somebody else onto that rock. On Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You know, the storm came and fell on the house that had been built on the sand and fell on the one that had been built on the rock and the one on the sand fell down. Mm. Be sure you're building on the rock, Christ Jesus, Jesus. because the storms will come. Yeah. They will come. And then the third one is the locust. Mm. It says the locusts have no king, but they advance together in ranks. You never see a locust on its own. They talk about a swarm of locusts. When the locusts descend upon whatever they choose to descend upon, they strip it bare. There is nothing left, right? Mm -hmm. One on its own wouldn't be a problem, would it? No. (laughs) No farmer has ever been afraid of one locust. Mm -hmm. But when they see the sky full of them, a Mm -hmm. swarm Mm -hmm. of locusts, Mm -hmm. it's another story. I used to play in a brass band and um, I'd play a trombone. Well, the trombone is obviously in the front row because otherwise it's going to poke somebody in the back of the head. <laughs> and we were, on, <laughs> we were on, on parade one day because where I grew up, there was a lot of coal mines and every coal mine had its own brass band and we used to have a competition against all the other brass bands. So there's about 25 in the brass band, 
but only three of us could play. <laughs> it was the most remarkable thing you've ever seen. <laughs> All the rest were miming. <laughs> So three of us are playing, blowing our heads off yeah. to try to make some noise, and the others are all pretending. Right. The right. others were willing for us to do all the work. Yes. <laughs> In Acts chapter 9, Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews in Damascus by proving Jesus was the Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an important thing I want to show you. After many days had gone by, they conspired to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on city gates to kill him. But his followers, watch this, took him by night, lowered him in a basket through the opening in the wall. They blew no trumpet. They got no special mention in Scripture. We don't even know their names, right? Yeah. They just listed as his followers. No applause. God's unsung heroes, I called them, but they saved the life of St. Paul, who went on to write one third of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. How amazing is Incredible, that? yeah. God needs Fascinating. an army of locusts. On my own, I can't do much. Yeah. You know, I've said this before, but two people can carry a piano between them, but one person cannot carry half a piano. It's impossible. <laughs> we can do more together mm. than we ever could do on our own. Ever, next time you see a swarm of geese flying through the air, this is quite a profound thing. But if you notice geese flying, they fly in a V formation, okay? Mm. It's incredible, really. And it's been learned that each bird flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the one behind it. And by flying in a V formation, it actually adds about 70% to the distance it can travel. One geese one goose flying on its own, yeah. would never be able to go as far as it can when it flies in formation with yeah. all the other geese. Now, this is incredible. If one falls out of formation, it might move towards the back and someone else will become the leading one to take the initial pressure and everything. But if one gets injured or damaged and falls to the ground, it has been noted that the others will go down to help it. That's an amazing thing in itself. It's incredible. And when you see geese flying over, you'll hear a funny honking noise. You know why they're honking? They're making that strange honking noise from behind to encourage the ones up the front to keep, keep on going. going. Yeah. It's an amazing thing, you it's know. Awesome. We yeah. talk about asking the animals and to see what we can learn from God's creation, but I tell you what. question was asked about one town in America. How many great men have been born in this town? The answer was none, only babies. <laughs> <laughs> babies good. become great men and yeah, women very good. through the encouragement of others. And I want to encourage every listener today Come on. to learn some lessons from what we've thought about here. Absolutely. So we talk about the ant. Thank you, Lord. We talk about the, the coney that lives in the rock. We talk about the locust. What about the spider? The spider. What can it teach us? Mm. I wonder. So I began to think, what can I learn from that? The lizard especially, and of course the spider's got long legs, and amazing thing, the spider spins its web but never gets stuck in its own web. How does that work out? And you know what? I confess, in the morning I've got up and I've seen a spider has spun its web on the wing mirror of my car. He's mm. been up all night, <laughs> all night. And it's quite miraculous the way that he spun that web and all I want to do is get rid of it. <laughs> so and you know I get rid of it, yeah. but you know what he does? He spins, spins another again, one. Yeah. How amazing is that? What a lesson is that to you That's and to me? That's tenacity again, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, don't give up. But others have come and discouraged you and tried to destroy what you've done. Don't give up. Learn from the spider. You can get rid of his web, but I tell you what, it won't stop him spinning another one. Absolutely. And it says <laughs> there in the Proverbs that he, he lives in King's Palace. I know. And, th and this is an amazing thing. My ability to keep going in the midst of opposition, discouragement, despair, confusion, all things that go on in your life and in your mind, problems, difficulties. We all have problems. We all have difficulties. We live in a real world. If you cut me, I will bleed. I'm not a robot. I'm a human being. Mm. I cry. I feel pain. We all have problems to deal with. How do I keep going? What can I learn 
that will help me to keep going when everything seems against me. He draws his stickability from within. And inside me, there is the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus said, he would give us a well of living water that would be within us to the woman at the well. And I want to say to you now, you can draw from that well right now. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to go to a conference. You see, this is the problem. We think we've got to go and hear some special preacher, some visit, some special church. No, you have this within you. Absolutely. The, the, that well of living water is within you. You can draw from it right now. The Holy Spirit is within you if you know Christ as your Savior. That's right. You can draw upon the Holy Spirit now and he gives you the strength when you're weak. He puts light into the darkness. He gives you hope when you're full of despair. He'll help you to keep going when everything else is trying to stop you. What an amazing picture is that. Praise God. Give you stickability. I, yeah, absolutely yeah. stickability. You can just keep on going. Thank you, Lord. Four wise guys. Mm. That's how the Bible describes these things. Mm, mm, the mm. ant prepares for winter while it is summer. I want to encourage you. Don't waste another day. But today, determine to do something for the Lord. Amen. Go for Whatever it. it might be. Even a cup of cold water. Even smiling at someone. My goodness me. Even saying thank you to someone. Even dropping someone a message to, to encourage them. Mm. What an amazing thing that is. Absolutely. And I tell you something, Dudley. I will never die from being over-encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that, right? Absolutely I right. I tell you. Yeah, go on. Everybody can tell me when they feel I could have done something better, but few will bother to send you a note of encouragement. The Coney, never forget, make sure you're building your life upon the rock. The Locust, don't be in isolation. Don't be a lone, a lone ranger. Mm. But let's work together. Amen. Support this ministry. Let's let us know how you're doing. Get back to us. Talk with us, Absolutely. communicate with us. We need each other. That's right. And then the spider, that lizard, he keeps on walking because he draws his stickability from within. And by God's grace, I pray that each one of us will learn something today as we ask the animals from these wise guys. Fantastic. Peter Jenkins, thank you, Sasha, for sharing those with us. Uh, just to say, if you've been listening up and you've got some questions, uh, then uh, do drop us a note. Write to me by email, dudley at surereality.net. Dudley at surereality.net. Pastor Peter, thank you so much for joining us. You've been listening to The Reality with me, Dudley Anderson, today featuring The Reality Bible Special with Pastor Peter Jenkins. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. To find out more on how you can become a vision partner, please visit our website, surereality.net. From me, Dudley Anderson, to you, as always, keep your eyes on Jesus, and God bless. Music.